Mexico. Um, in the past few years, we saw a lot of artists go independent. Macklemore, Chance the Rapper, they, you know, they they kind of gimmick themselves as independent artists, and they've done they've been pretty successful. Do you see more artists going independently, and do you see the record label kind of maybe that model kind of diminishing, or like where do you see the f future of the record labels and stuff? So I'll tell you exactly how it is because I'm fiercely independent now and I'm developing talent. I have a very big producer, KBZ, who did the Boot song, 24K Golden. Um, we found him at 17. I have Stefan Benz, and they're all independent. So, so um, it's all about market share today. So the labels have less people working for them, and they'd rather overpay for a song or an artist that's done the work and has the leverage, streams, likes, fan base. Does that make sense? They'd rather do that. They'll get there faster. They'll get their market share than spend five years developing an act. So, 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 so the truth is those like myself and others that really like developing artists over time, you know, we create production deals or become partners with these artists. We fund it ourselves, develop and grow. And then we create bidding wars. We're happy to have someone on a major label for a short term distribution deal for them to celebrate market share, to drive a stock. Warner Music Group, publicly traded. Universal Music Group, going to be publicly traded. Uh, um, um, you know, so 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 when you think about Spotify, right? You know, publicly traded. Apple, publicly traded. So these 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 music entities are publicly traded. So it is about market share, and market share drives stock prices and whatever else. So the artist development game, as much as any label could come on here and say they're developing artists, they're not. They'd rather just pick off the best of the best that they see have done the work. You know, and even at Republic back in the day when we helped break the weekend and we spent a lot of time with the weekend, he had already, you know, he was already able to, you know, uh, sell out the O2 or do three radio cities or the Greek in LA. He did the work over many years. Now, did we absolutely help elevate the music, uh, the marketing, the promotion? 100%. And he would tell you that. Um, but it was a distribution deal. And what a distribution, a distribution deal means, a distribution deal means that he owns his masters. So we get a piece of the streams, but he is the owner of his recordings. He is the owner of his tour. He's the owner of his merch. He controls his brand. So I think artists really, the artists that are, that are really in it to win it and are confident and don't necessarily need to be funded um, have this independent mentality with their crew their management, their guys and girls around them to go out and create leverage for themselves. And then there's so much money offered when you create leverage because everyone wants the next, the new, uh, and that market share. Uh, bidding wars get created. And, um, and, 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 and what happens is you end up overpaying for talent. Um, I do think there's a few guys still in the game uh, that do that. I think Ron Perry, is, who, who's helped develop Kid Leroy, at Columbia, Kid, Kid Leroy has been developing over the last many years. If you've watched this, it didn't just happen overnight. And, and so I, I love that artist development story. But if you really look around at the superstars in our business today, there hasn't been a lot of new ones. Look, Billy was signed at 14, but her team of managers and Justin, her, her, her label. I remember Justin coming to my house, playing me Ocean Eyes many years ago. And how do we get it in the radio? How do we break this? She didn't break overnight. This girl's been doing this since she's 14 years old, maybe 13. You guys will know better than me. You know, and so then you look and see them just appear, but it's never that way. It is absolutely at least a five year process to break an artist. And that's what no one sees. No one sees Post Malone. We, we signed Post Malone on White Iverson breaking on SoundCloud. Okay. And he was a very different person when you met him. You know, you looked at him and you weren't sure. And then, you know, but you knew he could write and over time just, just wrote classics. And you know he can play in the country world, the rock world, hip hop world, pop world. Uh, but that took years and years and years if you were to sit with him or his managers who were very good friends of mine. These were, these were fights. I remember, again, back in the day going to iHeartMedia over uh, White Iverson, congratulations, and they, they – IR media did not break Post Malone. No one really believed. They thought he was awkward looking and didn't look like a star. I remember these conversations. He Post didn't just break. These were wars we fought. 
And I think, you know, every artist does need these troopers on the ground, you know, pushing and pushing great. And eventually, as I said at the beginning, this great matters, great cuts through. But not anyone, even most people don't see any of this until there's traction, until people start raising their hands, stopping the scroll, saying, what was that? And that sort of multiplying over time. These things take a really, really long time, every single time for the biggest stars in the world. There's no okay. such thing. The, you know, what are we going to say? I, I want a name of someone that's up and coming that people don't know about yet, but you see the talent there. You see in three, five years, these, this person is going to be the next big star. What would, whose name would that be? And, and, and I have to say this because it's someone that I'm working with, and I'll give you an example. I'm working with a kid that I met um, who was living in South Africa at 11 years old, and someone brought his family and him to New York to meet me a guy named Manny Mahedas, who I love, always saw on the red carpet whenever I saw Adam and you guys, brought him to me and I looked, looked at this kid and I looked at his father. His father's 6'1", stunning, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm looking at this kid and I heard him sing and then he played me a song that he wrote and I knew he was had that God-given star trip. And I always ask the mother. It's always like the mothers that know. Tina Knowles, Joan Grande, um, Haley Samuel's mother, Sherry. I always say, what was your kid like at five or six or seven? They all say the same thing, singing and dancing. In fact, some say they were dancing and singing in their belly. And it's a consistent answer for these kids that have that star chip DNA. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that you just, it's a consistent answer every time from the mother or father, especially the moms. Because none of these moms came from music. These kids just came out like aliens. And I got goosebumps when the mom's telling me the story about this child. So we signed him. And now he's 14. And now we're getting the calls. And now are people starting to notice. And he just put out his album. And, you know, all that stuff starting to happen. We're not trying to rush to break a 13-year-old or 14-year-old, but then he'll be 15 in September. There's a process. At 16 is probably the sweet spot where we have a gold medalist, someone that's been training for the Music Olympics for five years.